one. Is it possible that I could write that with a negative R? Sure. All I have to do is face the opposite way and then go backwards. So for example, I could write this angle as a negative pi over 4. Oops. Yeah. Negative pi over 4. And if the angle is negative pi over 4, what do you think the r would be? Negative, negative 1. Negative 1, good. So notice in this case, point D was written with a negative r and a negative theta. What if I want a negative r, but a positive theta? Is that possible? Yes. Sure, as a matter of fact, this same angle, negative pi over 4, if I wanted to choose an angle between 0 and 2 pi, and most of the time that's what we want, okay? So if I want an angle between 0 and 2 pi, if I go all the way around to here, what angle would that be? So again, a positive angle in standard position, if I turn this far all the way to here, what angle would that be? 7 pi over 4. 7 pi over 4, and that would give me a negative 1 for the R. Okay, so notice point D, I actually showed it four different ways. Okay, positive R, positive theta. Negative R with a positive theta, positive R with a negative theta, and then negative R and a negative theta, right? And these are not even the only four possibilities. There are actually an infinite number. Okay, but these are the ones that I just happened to think of first. Okay, so anyway, if I give you a point, just so you know, there's only one way to show that point on the graph. But once I graph the point and I ask you to give me the coordinates, there are actually an infinite number of answers. Okay, now here's the problem. If we have a test question and I give you a point, and everybody gives me a different answer, is that going to be consistent? I mean, technically, everybody can give me a different answer, and you'd all be correct. Okay, and as a teacher, it would be my job to figure out, okay, let's see, is this the same thing? Da, 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 da. Yes. Is this the same thing? Da, 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 da. Yes. Okay. I could do that and then check that for every single problem, or why don't we just make our own rule for the class and say that if I don't tell you otherwise, okay, let's have some rules so that we always write the point the same way. First rule, if I don't specify radians or degrees, I want radians, okay? And the one reason I'm doing that, first of all, so we're consistent, so we all do it the same way, but one reason why I'm preferring radians over degrees is because next year, you guys are gonna be learning AP Calculus, and just so you know, with calculus, you only use radians. Okay, so you need to kind of get used to using radians more. It's almost like you guys are speaking Chinese part of the time and English part of the time, but we're trying to push you more and more towards English, while I'm also trying to push you more and more towards radians and less and less on degrees. Okay, so that's the first rule, always use radians. Second rule, unless I tell you otherwise, let's always just go ahead and use between zero and two pi, okay? So, let's write these down. We'll call that our default. Does everybody know what default means? Like default is what you use unless you're told to use something else. Okay, so number one, use radians. Number two, the angle is gonna be at least zero but less than 2 pi, okay? And also, let's not use negative numbers for R unless you're told otherwise. Or if I tell you, like, write this point three different ways. If I tell you to write a point three different ways, then trust me, you have to break the rules, okay? So uh, if I tell you to write a point multiple ways, then obviously you'll have to break those rules. Or if I tell you use degrees, or if I tell you to uh, use a different 
restriction for the angle, then of course you're going to use that. But otherwise, we'll just say our default is going to be that. And then we'll always get the same exact answer. 